what we're going to do in this particular test is we're going to have a VM that is uh, up and running, and uh, it's on a VPlex Metro configuration, so it's a distributed uh, on a distributed device. We're going to artificially disconnect the two sites, the inter-cluster uh, communications, to uh, simulate a partition and take a look at what happens uh, to the individual VM as we do that. So what I'm doing right now is I'm logging into uh, the um, uh, the VPlex's uh, management console and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to artificially uh, partition uh, this particular VPlex Metro pair of cl uh, clusters. Now this is a pretty uh, obscure way of doing this because obviously this is something that uh, in the real world, you're, you're not going to do. You're not going to artificially partition your cluster. Uh, it's going to be partitioned because you know you've had a uh, inner uh, cluster communications failure, or or one site is a smoking hole, as an example. And that's one thing that's very important to understand about you know cluster behavior and split brain behavior is you don't necessarily know whether the other site is alive or dead. So you have to build in something where prior to the failure. Uh, the behavior on failure results in no split brain. And that's that very important uh, um, uh, detached rules or preferred site behavior of a vplex configuration. So this command here, uh, you don't need to worry about the syntax. In essence, what it's doing is it's disabling all of the ports that are used for all inter-cluster communication. So if we pop over, you can see that um, we've got these two clusters here as part of the overall uh, VPlex Metro configuration. Um, and uh, all communication now between cluster 1 and cluster 2 is broken. And that means that the distributed device that's used, being used to support that particular VM is going to now go into a read-only state based on its uh, uh, partition rules. So in fact, if we take a look at the device, you'll notice that immediately, uh, because we've created that partition, you'll notice that cluster 2 has got that warning. The, notice the rule set is cluster one detaches. It's a little counterintuitive. What that means is that if there's a partition, cluster one detaches from the metro configuration and continues to be in a read-write state, while cluster two goes into a read-only state and presents out the device in a read-only state. So you'll notice the device um, uh, um, is now out of date on the cluster two side because there's actual I.O. coming in, which is making uh, uh, for some divergence. You'll notice here that uh, it's saying that uh, uh, it's stressed and the winner is running, meaning it, it's running on on, uh, um, on cluster one. So if we take a look at it, you'll also notice that the other devices are in various states of of, uh, um, uh, of partition as well, um, depending on the you know the amount of I/O that's going to them and, and so on and so forth. So popping back to our VM. Um, it's still up and running, um, and uh, as uh, shown in the other video, it actually takes a fair amount of stuff to make a VM uh, stop responding. So here we're uh, remote, uh, we're RDP'd into that particular VM, and uh, now we're going to do something. So I'm going to open up uh, Explorer, and just like what we saw when we actually just yanked the storage, in this case the storage is in a read-only state, um, but uh, the behavior again is that non-deterministic behavior. Uh, the VM uh, will respond to ping intermittently. Uh, uh, it's non-responsive from uh, uh, the UI and, and various other things. So you can see it's still responding to ping even though the UI was totally frozen. So now what we'll do is uh, uh, just uh, poke at this a little bit more. Um, once again, uh, more time has gone on. You'll notice here it says uh, the winner is running. It's uh, there's a critical failure. It's uh, out of date on, uh, um, and it's going to need a rebuild after uh, um, after we've remerged it because it sees that there's been some I/O that's gone to the other side. This one here, you can see it's stressed. The winner's running, and it's going to need a rebuild. Once again, cluster one is the detached rule for that particular other device. One thing that's important to understand about VPlex is that the detached rules apply on a device by device basis, not a cluster by cluster basis. So you have some devices surviving on one side, some on the other side, if that's how you'd like to do it. You'll notice here that the ping has stopped uh, responding, but uh, just like when we yank the underlying uh, storage, uh, this is something where it's going to pop in, it's going to pop out. Uh, it's uh, uh, non-deterministic behavior. So if we uh, take a look uh, at that particular VM, 
Um, once again, it's non-responsive from the UI, just like you'd expect. You can see the hourglass there, and uh, uh, the ping is now um, uh, not responding as well. What we're going to do now is just explore a few things while this uh, uh, system is running in this particular state. Um, we're going to try and uh, see what it looks like if you try and navigate a data store, if you do a rescan of the devices, um, uh, and those sorts of things. Because again, we're talking about a state here where uh, the devices are being presented but in a read-only state. So uh, um, let's go ahead and uh, take a look at some of those things. Once again, notice VM is frozen. Um, so if we go and we take a look um, at the uh, uh, individual uh, stuff within the vCenter client, we're going to give it a little uh, a kick in, in certain ways to try and see uh, uh, what we can do. So here, for example, is the data store. Can we browse the data store? So if you open this uh, browse data store, I've also noticed that this behavior in this uh, particular circumstance is a little bit non-deterministic. Uh, for example, here it's going to open up, but uh, you won't be able to see any of the underlying files within the data store. Now, this is actually something that, uh, depending on how you open it and when you open it, um, sometimes you will be able to read it and sometimes you won't. Um, one thing I think it's important to understand is that while I'm describing that uh, its behavior is non-deterministic, uh, the partition makes sure that the data, uh, uh, there's no chance of uh, split brain from a data standpoint. So uh, uh, immediately on that partition state, um, one of the um, uh, uh, sides of the cluster, the, the one that is the loser of the uh, uh, detached rule policy, uh, immediately goes into a read-only state, so there's no chance of split brain uh, at the storage layer. One thing that's different versus the yanking the LUN scenario here is that the uh, number of devices, you'll see that it sees three devices. Uh, as we do a rescan, um, uh, the number of devices would stay constant at three. Now, this rescan takes a lot longer in this uh, in this state than I've observed um, when everything's hunky dory. If we go and take a look at the VM, you'll notice that once again it's sometimes responding to ping, sometimes not. The UI remains totally frozen the whole time. Um, so it's continuing to do the rescan. Let's just close those data store browser windows that we had open and um, uh, we'll continue on our merry way here. The one thing that's interesting is, is that in this partition state, if for example um, it wasn't that there was a partition between the two clusters, but you were sure that there, the uh, uh, primary story site was uh, having a disaster and you declare a disaster, um, there's a simple command that where you can promote the non-preferred side uh, to continue to do I.O., at which point uh, it can continue along its merry way um, and uh, continue to support the the individual host. The one thing that's very important though is that uh, should you choose to manually unsuspend the LUN, meaning returning it to its read-write state, um, uh, that side is now you know the, the side that is the authoritative side. If indeed there isn't a disaster on the other side, um, you know you might have IOs going against two sides of the mirror and uh, remerging it. One of them has to be authoritative. So uh, you'll notice that uh, once again the ping intermittently is coming on and off. Um, if we go and we take a look at this device, once again we haven't changed anything. So you can see that uh, uh, more and more it needs uh, it needs to have this uh, uh, distributed rebuild um, across those devices. So all of the devices now are are in a partition state. Um, and uh, again, whether they're in a read-write state or in a read-only state depends on that rule set, um, on whether that device is, uh, uh, um, you know, the preferred site is either cluster one or cluster two. So um, what we're going to do now is uh, uh, the behavior is pretty consistent there in the guest. What we're going to do is we're going to reinstate connectivity between uh, the two sites. So this is uh, uh, simulating, uh, you know, uh, the inner cluster connectivity returning. Uh, like I said earlier, if uh, if it wasn't a case of uh, intermittent site failure or anything like that, you could manually um, uh, force the individual di distributed device to uh, uh, go into a uh, read-writable state uh, if you cleared a disaster. So as uh, that device returns, um, 
um, into its read writable state because now we've restored the inter cluster communication. You can see the VM comes back. Um, and in fact, not only is it responding to pings again, um, but in fact, the UI is responding. You'll see here that I can say, hey, look, let's just restart Explorer. And um, uh, the system is responsive again. So once again, just like the uh, uh, scenario where we yanked the LUNs, it's surprising how resilient the Windows 2008 host has been to extended periods of uh, uh, no write IOs uh, capable to pend. Um, the behavior is indeterminate, and uh, whether or not you get a blue screen or anything like that, it depends very much on uh, the type of guest OS and what's going on inside of the guest. But in spite of the guest behavior being indeterminate, um, the VPlex preferred site selection uh, model means that there's zero chance of split brain at, at the uh, storage layer. Uh, thanks for watching. Hopefully, this makes you understand a little bit more about uh, VPlex um, uh, behavior on partition.